let's talk about cellular transport active and passive. This sort of coincides with the xylem and phloem in plants. A review, <clears throat> remember solute and solvent. Whatever, you, if you have salt water, the salt's the solute, the solvent's the water. Whatever is being dissolved is the solute. Whatever dissolves it is the solvent. Concentrates the mass solute per unit of the solvent, normally 100 grams. Diffusion is the movement of material across the cell from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. No energy required. A new word is equilibrium. And this is concentration is the same throughout the entire system. Everything is equal. Equal. You might want to copy this down and print out this page. So please note this page. It's very important for vocabulary. Active transport is when you have to move materials against the concentration gradient. A gradient is like a slope or a hill. Everything wants to go to high or low. But when you have active transport, you're moving things against this. And when you move things across the membrane, against this concentration gradient, it's called active transport. And we'll explore it, some forms of it today. First thing is it uses energy, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. You move molecules from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration. This is going against the grain. Normally, high concentration moves to low concentration to reach an equal state of equilibrium. So everything is the same. Active transport carried out by a transport protein, which are embedded in the cell membrane. So, normally, the high concentration and low concentration will just even out. That's your normal diffusion. But in active transport, you're moving something from a low concentration to a high concentration. The molecule will be transported. Normally has a transport protein, so these little balls are the molecule moving. And you have a transport protein that helps it using energy. The energy forces the molecule through because you need energy to move against the grain. It's like swimming against the tide. You can either flow with the tide downriver or you can swim upriver. Larger molecules and composite material can also be transported across cell membrane. But when you move transporting larger materials, this will change the shape of the cell membrane. And so there are two ways. Endocytosis and exocytosis. Endo means in. So you're moving large material into the cell. Parts of the cell membrane wraps around the particle and engulfs it. So you have endocytosis where you have a pocket being formed and then it goes down to a lysosome. And this helps down to break down big molecules of macromolecules of big molecule to subunits. Or you can go the other way where you have the RNA making your protein in the ER, which goes to Golgi to package it and gets transported out of the cell. We'll talk about both these things in general, but in general, endo is in, exo is out. Here's endos, endocytosis. Things come into a little pocket here, the pocket closes, and it's what's called a vesicle as you surround the membrane around whatever you're bringing into the cell. This is endo. There's two types. Phagocytosis, where you take particles in the cell, and pinocytosis, where you take liquid. Pinot is liquid, phago is like solids. So things come here, the liquid gets engulfed in a circle, and then you have a vesicle that's a liquid vesicle. Or you can have big particles come in here, it forms a phagosome, which is large Best large material forming a little vesicle inside your cell. Exocytosis is when you move large material out of the cell. You get vesicles forming around the particle, the vessel combined with the cell membrane, and you push it out of the cell. In exocytosis, say you want to excrete a hormone. So your body makes a hormone, and it brings it to the surface, and releases it into extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid is any fluid between your organs, like say your heart and your lungs, you have extracellular fluid, or something between your the cytoplasm and your organelles. 